This is Cheney. Welcome to Cakes and Aprons. Today we are going to go to 1979 to make a jello dessert called the Crown Jewel Dessert. The apron that I'll be wearing is very much of the fashion of the 1970s. It was a much fuller skirt, like you can see this cute mommy and me one. So get your apron on, tie it up, turn on your record player, and we will be making a dessert from 1979 for a 1979 dinner party. Here it is, the crown jewel. Mine ended up looking different because I added more jello pieces inside. I wanted to stretch out the recipe so that I could make an extra one for a friend of mine. After doing this though, I will tell you that I don't recommend that. I just would suggest following the recipe to the T and I will show you how to do that today so that you can make a dessert for a 1970s dinner party yourself. The recipe is from the New Joys of Jello cookbook and the dinner party that we are fashioning our dinner party off of is from this book. You can see the beautiful Jello display here. But gelatin desserts and gelatin salads and meals date way back before the 1970s. Before we used the household name of Jello, gelatin had been used for many years. It was served in the Middle Ages. It was made of collagen, which called for the melting and filtering of pig's ears and feet. And gelatin became a status symbol because you needed a lot of meat to get enough bones to boil. Then later, in the mid-19th century, a cough syrup maker patented the brand name Jell-O. When the processed food industry was thriving, Jell-O tapped into the culinary current of the era, which was domestic science. The spirit of domestic reform embraced efficiency, purity, cleanliness, and order, and science, all the attributes that Jell-O presented. Then later in the Depression era, the homemakers had to stretch the ingredients that they had as far as possible. And the introduction of lime-flavored Jell-O in the early 1930s gave the salad trend a major boost. In fact, Jell-O salads did not fall from popularity until the early 1980s. Here's my great-grandmother's chicken mayonnaise salad recipe using one large hen, celery, blanched almonds, and many other ingredients in the gelatin. I'm sure it was a big hit. But our Jell-O recipe is a dessert. You will need a package of Jell-O orange gelatin, a cherry gelatin, and a lime gelatin, all three ounces, three cups of boiling water, one and a half cups of cold water. You'll also need a package of the Jell-O lemon flavor gelatin, a fourth a cup of sugar, one cup boiling water, a half a cup of canned pineapple juice, and two envelopes of Dream Whip whipped topping mix. <laughs> to begin this, you need to prepare the orange, cherry, and lime gelatin separately using one cup of boiling water and a half a cup of cold water for each. Don't follow the directions on the package of the Jell-O because you need a lot less water. These have to be a lot more firm so that you can get really nice cut squares to put into your dessert. So pour each of the flavor in, into separate eight inch square pans. Chill until firm. It suggests at least three hours, but it's better to do overnight. Then you cut into one half inch cubes set aside for a few of each flavor of these for garnish. So now you can plan the rest of your dinner party. And what are you gonna wear? Well, 70s fashion showed bold colors and patterns. Women's fashion looked back to the 1940s by day and they pumped up the glamor by night. Men had an array of suits to choose from. You could do colorful or plaids. Of course, you could let your chest show and we had the wide collars. There was polyester outfits that were form-fitting and then flared at the bottom and of course you could Wear a shirt with your midriff or wear more classy attire with the printed dresses that are more form-fitting. And now let's plan your dinner party. So you'll need to start out with appetizer and how about fondue? Fondue was very popular in the 1970s. If you have a bar, make sure you leave it out for your guests to come and go to the bar whenever they please. Also, you could try the cheese ball or the salmon loaf, both popular in the 1970s. And if you have a kid's table, 
the Kraft macaroni and cheese and Spam casserole could be a big hit. Now for the main course, you could always do meatballs. Those were very popular in the 1970s with many different kinds of sauces. Or here is beef stroganoff, also another popular dish. Or you could do the raclette. This thing is so cool. It is better than fondue. You grill your food on top and then you, each person that comes has their own melted cheese down below. It's very entertaining and fun to do with a lot of guests. Also in 1979, the Tofu Cookbook came out with many dishes that you could serve for your vegetarian friends, which was becoming increasingly popular. Also, chef salads, layered salads became really popular, or any salad that include heavy dressing and shrimp was also popular in the 1970s. For dessert, there was the Black Forest Cake or Grasshopper Pie. But of course, we're bringing the Jello. <laughs> Well, I hope you made a special dessert for our reunion. I didn't make dessert. No dessert. Instead, I made some fun. Watch it glimmer, see it shimmer, cool and fruity, jello, brand jello, jello, of all desserts you'll love the one that tastes so light and makes such fun, make jello, 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 and make some fun. You always knew how to make fun. Now that all your cube jello is ready, you do the other part. You must dissolve lemon gelatin and the sugar in one cup of boiling water and then stir in the pineapple juice. Now you chill until this is slightly thickened. Then you prepare both envelopes of the whipped topping mix as directed on package. Next, you fold this whipped mixture into the lemon gelatin mixture and mix till smooth and then put in your jello pieces and mix them up. Remember, I did extra jello pieces. I wouldn't recommend this. Just stick with the recipe so that you get more of that creamy, more gelatin on the outside. When you are done pouring yours into your form or your nine inch spring pan, let it sit in the fridge for at least five hours. I did mine overnight. It is suggested that you use your finger or I use a little spatula to move it away from the sides and also dip it into warm water for about 10 seconds. Put your plate on top of the mold and then you will turn it over and look at it. It works beautifully. It even gives a little booty shake jiggle, which is so fun with a jello. And then you will be ready for your 1979 dinner party. Voila. And now we get to try the crown jewel cake of 1979. And you can see that my mold was a little different than the original picture. So I did not decorate mine on the top with jello, but you might want to do that. All right, so let's cut into it. Mine's falling apart a little bit. I added more jello pieces than it called for, and I'm sure that is why mine is not holding up. But let's taste it. Wow, it's like a complete rainbow of flavor. It has, I can taste the lime, the cherry. I really like what all of these little jello pieces are sitting in, which is the lemon and that <laughs> dream whip stuff. But actually that part tastes really good. It's a lot of jello fun. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for joining me for Cakes and Friends. See you next time. <laughs>